Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are taking a look at the Setme LV. Uh, that is the Setme L rifle, which was adopted by the Spanish in the mid-1980s. The V model, standing for visor, uh, or sight, optic. This is the designated marksman's version of the standard Setme L infantry rifle. Now, there are two different versions here, as the keen-eyed among you will have already noticed. If you look up the literature on the Setme LV, you'll typically see it referenced as, well, it has a different rear sight block that can fit either a British SUSAT or a Spanish Enosa scope, which are the two scopes that were used. What's interesting, though, is that these are not interchangeable. The two versions of this rifle have unique, different rear sight blocks. Uh, in fact, this one doesn't even have a rear sight block, it just has a mounting block for the SUSAT. Uh, this one does actually have a rear sight in it, but they're not interchangeable. You can only put the Enosa on this one, and you can only put the SUSAT on that one. So it's a, a little bit curious as to why they did this. Now, uh, as best I've been able to understand, the Spanish Marines are the ones who got the SUSAT, uh, and they also put this optic on their Amelie light machine guns, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the Spanish Army had the Enosa scope, and they did, in addition to the four power daylight magnified scope, they did also actually have a night vision scope for it, which we'll touch on at another time. At any rate, uh, what we have here specifically today is a Markolmar version of the Setme LV with the SUSAT, on loan from Markolmar, thank you guys, and an HMG, a Hill & Mac Gunworks version of the Setme LV that I actually built myself when I was there like four years ago. So uh, what I want to do now is go ahead and show you the two up close, and show you the difference between the two mounting blocks and the two scopes, because we have two fundamentally different versions, or different styles of magnified optic here, and they're both relatively early types, but this is one with uh, adjustments on the body, and this is one with adjustments in the mount. So let's take a look at that. Alright, we'll start with the Enosa version here. First off, forgive the terrible welds, that's not HMG's fault, nor is it Setme's fault, that is my fault entirely because I welded that on and I am a terrible welder. Anyway, uh, moving on to the actual scope, what we have here is a four power scope. This is basically a copy of a like a Hensoldt uh, German 4 power 4 by 24 millimeter scope. Um, this is fitted with a Stanag style of scope mount where we have two rings here that lock onto a bar down there that connects with two screws to fixed mounting points on that tower. And that was sort of the NATO standard scope attachment before Picatinny rails became the, the hot thing. So that's how this is attached. Um, you do actually have access to the iron sights underneath here, although just barely. In fact, with the two, uh, with the lock washers on those scope mounting bolts, you kind of almost have that sight picture obscured. Um, but that's, that's your sight picture through the base. You can see that it does have uh, big hollow open spots, so at least you can sort of see through it. For reference sake, here is the standard Set Me L rear sight, um, where it is triangular instead of having these blocks front and back, but you have the same style of actual rear sight aperture in there, which is a two position, uh, well, two position aperture, one for 200 yards, one for 400, or 200 meters, one for 400 meters. The only marking on the Enosa is that name uh, there on the top of the rear bell, and a serial number. Now the Enosa scope uh, originally had a rubber eyepiece which has been removed from this one, uh, also has a cover on the front which is uh, broken off as many of them are. Now we have a windage adjustment on this, but it's really only meant for an armorer, because this turret isn't actually a turret, this doesn't move. To adjust the windage you turn the screw in the center. So this isn't for like clicking in windage because you know, oh the wind went from 5 miles an hour to 15, we'd better put in a couple extra clicks of windage. No, this is just for zeroing the scope. If you have wind, you hold off, and we'll show you that in the reticle in a moment. Uh, we do have a 5.56 caliber bullet drop compensator in uh, the top here, in the elevation dial, and this runs from 100 meters out to 1200, right there. So same style of thing, you've got a, a sort of unmarked uh, zeroing screw in the top. The reticle is a little bit unusual, there's that center aiming post uh, along with a 
reference post at the top, and then you have hash marks uh, on the left and right for giving you windage. And unfortunately, I am not sure exactly what those hash marks uh, indicate, what the distances are. But that's the reticle you've got in the Anosa. Now the SUSAT version is substantially different. So on this we just have a block that has a dovetail rail on it. The SUSAT itself has a pair of tightening screws, which I can loosen up here, and then it has a sort of a locking plunger right here that I can lift up, slide the optic off, and there's the actual mounting block uh, on the rear. There is no rear sight on the gun, it does still have the bolt hold open, bolt release functionality, which is, that's, that's nice. Uh, but I guess they figured they didn't need a rear sight on these, because the SUSAT actually has its own emergency backup iron sights. It has a little aperture that's just screwed onto the top there, and I suppose that's good enough should this thing fail, which it probably won't. So this is the optic that the British used on the L85, which I guess actually isn't really that much to brag about. Uh, but what makes it a little unusual is, in, unlike the Enosa, this has no, uh, no adjustments to the reticle in the scope at all. Instead, you make any zeroing adjustments on the base. So we have a BDC back here, which is calibrated from 3 out to 800 meters, 6, 7, and 8 and dialing that in simply lifts up the back of the scope down here. You can see there's a big old spring putting tension on it up. There are two nuts at the front of the mount, here and here, uh, and loosening one and tightening the other will shift this side to side. That gives you your windage, and you can see they're marked uh, left and right. Now this one is rather difficult to get a good sight picture in the camera because of it's very short eye relief, but what you have is this gigantic like obelisk shaped pointer coming up from the bottom, and then this is actually illuminated by a tritium vial that's in the side of the scope uh, at night. Now the tritium in this one is dead, the tritium in virtually all of them is now dead because they have to be replaced every 8 to 12 years, because the tritium simply naturally degrades over time, it is a radioactive isotope. Uh, and this was called the SUSAT, which stands for Sight Unit Small Arms Trilux, and the Trilux stands for Tritium uh, Illumination. So that's, that's what you've got here. It's interesting when the, just a little side note, when the British used this style of scope on the FAL, they actually had that pointer coming down from the top when they rebuilt uh, basically the same kind of optic but in a new style uh, for the L85, they went to a, a post on the bottom like this. So there are your two different versions of the SETMI LV, uh, one for the SUSAT with all of its uh, scope adjustments being made actually on the scope base, one for the ANOSA where all the scope adjustments are made within the, uh, within the scope itself. Uh, one for the Army, one for the Marines. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'd like to give a big thanks to Mark Holmar uh, for loaning me this version of the SUSAT mounted SETMI LV, because while I have this one I didn't have one of these, and I wanted to show you guys both versions at the same time. Uh, if you're interested in the semi-auto versions of these guns, I will be doing a video a little bit later on uh, showing the differences between the HMG, the Hill and Mac version, and the Markle Mar version, so you can check that out uh, when it publishes in a little while. Thanks for watching.